Now, this is the biggest and the most important tip that I could ever give you, so come close and listen up. Hey, what's up, Hustlers? Chris Morgan here with BlogHustlers.com. Welcome to my channel, the channel where it's all about helping you build your blog, create awesome content, and helping others grow. Now, if this is your first time visiting the channel, don't forget to smash the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably just started your blog and you wanna get things started off to a right track. But if you've been watching my content, I tend to share blog strategies to help you build your blogging business. But I think that it's also important to share information that you should avoid to save you from falling into the blogging trap that so many new bloggers face when they're starting out for the first time. So today in this video, I wanna share five of the biggest blogging mistakes that I made when I first started blogging. But not only that, I wanna provide you with actionable steps to help prevent you from making those same blogging mistakes that I made. So with that being said, let's get hustled. Now the first mistake that I have for you is choosing topics that your readers aren't interested in. Now when I first started blogging, I thought of all kinds of topics that I thought people would like to learn about. But the problem is, I didn't do any research behind it and it slowed down the growth of my blog. Now although choosing the right blog post topics are important, but writing content that no one really cares about can really hurt your blog from growing. Although your blog may be yours because you created it, but it isn't for you, it's for your audience. Now in the recent video that I published, I showed you how to find three months worth of low competition blog post topics that can help you to validate your content that your audience is already looking for. So if you want to see that video, you can check that video out right here. The thing is, this type of writing is only a mistake if the purpose of your blog's content is to educate, entertain, or to inform others. But if your blog is meant to serve as a journal of your personal thoughts, then that's fine. But don't be surprised if people aren't interested in reading it. Now, the biggest tip that I can give you is to choose a specific direction that you want your blog to take from the beginning. Now, the second mistake that I have for you is not promoting your blog content. Now, the fact is that some new bloggers starting out think that just writing a blog post with high quality content is enough, but that's really not the truth. I'm finna be rich. This is the one that's gonna get me all the traffic that I want. The truth is you should also have other places that you wanna promote your content. So for example, this is what helped me to think of it this way. If a Walmart was built in the middle of a desert, how would anyone get to it? Would anyone even know it was there? The point that I'm trying to make in all of this, if you want others to find your content, then you have to build bridges to your content. Those bridges could be Pinterest, Facebook groups, forums, even YouTube videos, emailing lists, or even reaching out to other bloggers as well. Now, promoting your blog content should only take up to 80% of your efforts, but when writing high quality content should only take about 20% of your effort. Now, this is where the 80-20 rule comes into play. Now, when you focus too much time on writing content and not enough time on promoting your blog post content, this can in fact hurt you from getting traffic and can in fact hurt you from reaching the masses. So what I did to fix this, I created a checklist that I can follow after publishing my content and invest time into promoting that content across all my social media networks. Let me know down in the comments what are some of the biggest blogging mistakes that you made and what did you do to correct your blogging mistakes. Now the third mistake that I have for you is not tracking your progress. Now, if you're a new blogger and you just starting out, most new bloggers never realize the importance of tracking their progress in the beginning. Now, although it may not seem entirely important in the beginning when you just have a few readers, and these people may be your friends or your family, but these stats for your blog will become more crucial as you lead more down the road. Now, the fact is you won't know how each of your blog posts are performing. You won't know what's working or what's not working if you're not tracking the data of your blog post every day. Now, failing to use these tracking tools is one of the biggest blogging mistakes that I made. Now, to fix this, there are many tools that you can use to track the performance of your blog, but my favorite is Google Analytics. Now, while it may be free to use, it packs one heck of a punch when it comes down to tracking the progress of your blog. And that could be where this traffic is coming from, how long are people staying on your website, or are your bounce rate going up too high? Google Analytics tracks all of this. Now, sometimes when we're just starting out, it's hard for us to see how much we done progress. But the one thing I love the most about Google Analytics, you can set goals for your website. Now, in another video, 
I showed you how to set up Google Analytics and how to track the traffic from all your social media websites. So if you want to see that video, you can also check that video out right here. Now, if you find the real value in this video, be sure to hit the like button and give us a thumbs up. Now, the fourth mistake that I have for you is having an inconsistent publishing schedule. Now, we all are creatures of habitat and we have different routines that we do every day. But what I had to learn, your readers aren't any different at all. Now, when I started, my publishing schedule was all over the place. But having a consistent publishing schedule is what gives your visitors an easy way to incorporate your blog posts into their routine that they do every day. Now, when I first started, I heard people telling me, publish twice a week, publish every day. But although some people may tell you to do this, the biggest part of all of this is to pick one and continue to do it. Now, the truth in all is there is no magic number on how many times you should publish your blog post a week. But keeping a consistent schedule will help your readers to make it a habit to read your content on the days that you are posting your content. The same can be said for guest posting as well. So if you are consistently contributing to other blogs, then having a consistent publishing schedule on guest posting holds the very same weight. Now, an easy fix to this is picking one or two days to publish your content and build your calendar around those days that you publish your content. Doing this will allow you to have a well-planned out week building up to the days that your blog post goes live. Now, the fifth and final mistake that I have for you is, now this is the biggest and the most important tip that I could ever give you, so come close and listen up. Closer. Okay, right there, that's perfect. Now, are you listening? Build your list. Now, getting traffic to your website is important, but building your list is just as important and it allows your readers to stay in contact with you. If you're a new blogger and you haven't thought about growing your email list, it's a mistake that can come back to hurt you. And as far as increasing your traffic, more YouTube views, more sales in your product or your service. Are you starting to get the point now? Now, for most of us, we all want to monetize our blog, but the way to do this is by having a solid email list. If you have a new YouTube video that you just uploaded or a new blog post that you just published, no matter what you send to your email subscribers, the point is you have a personal audience right there in the palm of your hands at your convenience. Now, these are the people that you want. Without having an email list, you really missing the boat on growing your blog and growing your audience and not to mention getting to know your audience even more. My favorite tool that I recommend to build your email list with is ConvertKit. Even though ConvertKit isn't free, it's a godsend for many bloggers and it's made by bloggers for bloggers. So what better tool to use to help you build your audience for your blog? If you wanna get your hands on a free trial of ConvertKit, the link is in the description below, so make sure you check that out. I believe in being transparent and giving you real valuable information that can help you to build your blogging business. So if you wanna build your blog, I created a short playlist for you packed with good information to help you elevate your blog. So you can check that playlist out right here so if you're interested in building your blog increasing your traffic and growing an engaged audience and want new blogging strategies to take your business to the next level then consider subscribing to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with my latest videos i upload every tuesday and thursday to help serve your blogging business better now be sure to hit the subscribe button because in the next video i'll be showing you how i write a blog post over 3,000 words step by step because if you're serious about getting your post to rank in google then this video is a must see as always guys i appreciate you keep making awesome content keep hustling and i'll see you in the next one